Uh, let's turn to the letter of St. Jude. And we shall read a few verses. The Epistle of Jude. First three verses. And then we shall read verses 17 to the end. First three verses. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and call. Mercy unto you, and peace, and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Verse 70 onwards. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Loving Father, Enable your servant to bring the burden to be delivered as you have, O Lord, chosen. Sanctify me, the vessel. Make me purely humble with your power of grace. And Lord, speak to us and prepare each one of us for your own very own personal purpose and your soon coming and the preparation of each one of us. We ask all this in the most highly exalted name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters, the times that we live in are the times given by God as the age. The prophecy of God is given to us right from the very first chapter of the Bible, and that prophecy is always there living in the form of a germ that is a grain, one grain or something, but it is always alive. But God has given set special times for each prophecy to come to its perfection and fulfillment. 
the prophecy of the word of God, the living God, that the seed of woman shall crush the head of the evil one was given in the very first book of the Bible. And that came to an end 2000 years ago. And it is soon that his mysterious body, the church, which he is preparing, shall very shortly crush the head of the evil one out from the presence of God, according to Revelation chapter 12, 11. But before that happens, here the servant of the Lord, Jude, speaks wonderfully. And as it is read in the Greek Bible, and it is given in the New American also, Holy ones called, holy, holy ones called, means saints, beloved in God the Father. Now, this is missing in the KJV. You would be surprised this is in Gujarati Bible. And I hope that it is in the most Indian vernaculars. So, once again, holy ones called, beloved in God the Father, kept for Jesus Christ. May ye continue to be multiplied in mercy, peace, and love. Here, the man of God, servant of God, who is the half-brother of the Lord, calls himself, we know very well, as the brother of James. He does not and he dare not relate himself familiarly to the Lord. So it's very important to know what a great advantage he had. And yet, humbly, he relates himself to his sibling, James. Now we know that. So we thank the Lord for his humility. Dearly beloved, in this chapter, we read this very wonderful word. And he says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, verse 3, I'm reading, of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. This man of God has been thinking about, meditating about the great salvation that is given. And he is preparing to write about it. But dearly beloved, as he is the spiritual man, as he's indwelt by the Holy Spirit, as he's praying in the Holy Spirit all the time, as he is in tune with the heart of God, he does not and he is not allowed to write about the common salvation because that common salvation is given to each believer. And each believer is responsible to go deeper and deeper in the salvation that the Lord has given to us as the gift of his grace, love, and mercy. So dearly beloved, but the Lord overrules, God overrules and gives him the burden of God. Remember that. It is the burden of God. In the last days, in the prophetic days, in the days when there is judgment to come, there is the burden of God. If you read Habakkuk, 
there is the burden of God. And if you read all the apostles actually speaking, they have the burden of God. And these people who are the prophets of God, dearly beloved, they have embraced the heart of God and they are embraced by God. They are God and these men are in an embrace all the time. When you are in an embrace, dearly beloved, you have the touch, the sense of the heartbeat of the other person. So dearly beloved, this is the time when each man of God, especially who gives the word of God, is now at a great responsibility to be in embrace with God spiritually, always in tune with God in the spirit, in the Holy Spirit, so that he may know the burden of God's heart and put aside all other things that, that concern just the common salvation. Dearly beloved, common salvation is the base, is the foundation. Without that, no man come, can come to this embrace. This embrace begins with the common salvation. But then it goes on from grace to glory, from the Savior to the Lordship and Headship of Christ. So here we see that it is the we are the beloved of God the Father, and we are called to be the holy ones. And at the end, I'm jumping to the end. In the end, he says, wonderful, that now unto him that is able to keep us up from falling and to present you, he means each one of us, faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory. God the Father, dearly beloved, May sanctified us. He made us holy. But God the Savior. Who is saving us all the time. Dearly beloved. He is about to present us. Faultless. Before his own presence. So this is the thing. Salvation sanctifies. And the deep work or the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ as the believer appropriates available, makes him available of all of Christ in the spirit in himself, dearly beloved, he comes to perfection and not we are completed right now, but we are on the way to be perfected, each one of us. Dearly beloved, this is the burden of God's heart. And therefore, we in this letter, we see three beloved, three beloveds. First of all, the great eternal beloved that is in the first verse, holy ones. The beloved in the Father, in God the Father. John 3.16 For God so loved the world. Dearly beloved. 1 John 4.8.4.16 4, For God is love. Dearly beloved. This love, which is sanctifying love, which makes the sinner pure and holy, just as his son. Dearly beloved. This is the first verse. Holy ones called, called, and beloved in God the Father. And we are kept for Jesus Christ. We are kept for Jesus Christ that in the end, 
he can present us before his glory faultless we have never seen just like that just as he has never seen we will be presented before the throne of god as if we have never seen because we are given the very life that is christ himself so in the first beloved verse 3 we read here that beloved when i gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly agonizingly actually agonizingly painfully sorrowfully contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints dearly beloved here the man of god says very clearly come back to the original the genuine word of god the gospel come there give up all your noises of the so called singing and so called music much of the music that goes on right now dearly beloved is not based on the word of god it is based on emotion sentimentalism it is not from the spirit of god and so give up this christian entertainment and christian show and come back to the original the word of god the salvation that was given to you by the apostles dearly beloved all the men of god all of us we must know this that we have to agonizingly with great pain with great sorrow in our hearts and repentance come to the lord and tell him and we have to tell ourselves lord we have mixed up the original christ the original savior the original redeemer with our own ideas with our own ways with our own dearly beloved own designs and manners and you failed o oh lord to be like your son as he or as you o oh lord want us to be so very important it is a painful thing the lord says that contend agonize for the faith because this word this contend is it is it is up agonizing is a very big greek word here but it the, the heart of the word is agony over the word is there dearly beloved so remember this is very very important and we are given in this in this little chapter that cain he came to worship in his own way with his own material and in his own design and he brought the best of the fruit of the ground but that was not acceptable dearly beloved earthly ministry earthly worship sensualism sensationalism sentimentalism is not acceptable to god the real worship is a full of awe full of fear full of the great prostrating respect for god dearly beloved and it is very very important you would be surprised go to the internet and find out that so many pastors who are who know the word of god have rejected the music from the hill song ministry in australia why and so many of those songs i see among us and dearly beloved i warn you by the word of god it is not my word that come out of this entertainment 
come out of this sensationalism come out of the sentiment sentimentalism and bring to the lord the pure worship of abel which will make you somebody make you to kill you really believe because this is anyone who does not have the root good worship real worship genuine worship will murder the genuine worshipper so dearly beloved these people so called people who have great noises and great instrument to create great noises and great crowds of mixed people they bring great noises and they do not have true worship this age is marked with entertainment christianity there is hardly any true worship dearly beloved and it is very very important so the first beloved is you as the lord he says contend for the original contend for the simplicity of christ agonize feel the pain of the heart of god and he wants us that we contend for the faith we contend for the faith as uh, i have very little time to go so i will jump to uh, the last part the last part and that is verse verse 20 onwards but see verse 17 is also says beloved and there it says beloved remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our lord jesus christ see once again beloved contend for the original faith with pain 17 beloved remember the words ye that ye remember means each one of us ye why ye words which were spoken before of the apostles of our lord jesus christ that mockers would come in the last days and they will walk after their own ungodly lusts dearly beloved second peter 3 3 very clearly says that in the last days mockers will come and there are two kinds of mockers and scoffers people who are very rich super rich people in this world they do not fear any government they do not fear any kings they think that they have all these all these powerful politicians in their pockets they control really beloved write it down these scoffers are controlling this modern world the scoffers are controlling the politics of the whole world and they laugh and they think that we can do anything and everything and so far they have done this this pandemic and all these things you know these are the designs of the scoffers and they have only one interest they have the interest of belam to make more money to make more money really beloved and they send rockets into the air they go there and there is one that incites all kinds of rebellion in or many parts of the world with his money really beloved and these are the mockers these are the last days so these these in these last days we have to have the burden of god on our hearts on our hearts dearly beloved so 17th verse is remember the prophecy as the apostle said saint paul said in uh, 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 as we say first timothy 4:1 and we saw uh, second peter 3:3 and so dearly beloved these things are happening read them come to that level and come and understand this so how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust this is the ungodly lust 
Being we saw that. But ye beloved, verse 20. Beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Building yourself on the most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Dearly beloved, there are four things that are given to us that we should do. First of all, we have to build up ourselves in the most holy faith. Most holy faith. Now, who is most holy? The faith he is talking about here, dearly beloved. Faith, only faith, the word faith. No, dearly beloved. He is talking about the faith according to here. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 onwards. Let us understand that. What is this faith? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. And Galatians 2.20, quickly, Galatians 2.20, if it could be on the screen, so I can, yeah, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith, what? Faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So here in the 12th chapter, we read, that there is a cloud of witnesses which is given the list of them right from the forefathers, from patriarchs to the last ones. Uh, all these, Daniel and Moses and all oh, so many of them, they are given that even Yifta and those are given there. But he says, don't look for their faith. Don't think over their faith. Turn your face away from them. Why? They had the faith of Christ. It was not their faith. Because the faith is of the author. The one who initiates it. The initiator. The beginner. The author of the faith is the Lord Jesus Christ. Which Paul wrote in Galatians 2.20. That I live by the faith of the Son of God. Dearly beloved, this is the faith he says here. Build yourself in the oh, most holy faith. So the most holy one is the Lord Jesus Christ, dearly beloved. This man, Christ Jesus, who is the most holy one. You and I must be found building ourselves individually in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Dearly beloved, so this most holy faith and praying in the Holy Ghost. Dearly beloved, so here the second is the praying in the Holy Ghost. If one is one with Christ Jesus, if one person is in unity, oneness with Christ Jesus, he is one spirit according to 1 Corinthians 6, 17. According to 1 Corinthians 6, 17, he becomes one spirit with God. Read it. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Very clearly says, therein you have a matter against go, oh, oh, 6, 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. See, when we are joined unto the Lord, when we have the faith, and we are, when we are, when we continue to build up ourselves in the faith, it doesn't say yeah, we, are, we are perfect in the faith. It is the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the faith of the Son of God. It is the faith, dearly beloved, which has joined us to the Lord to become one spirit. And when we become one spirit, 
we become a prayer we become a prayer constant prayer our soul must come under this authority of the indwelling holy spirit and so the second part is praying in the holy ghost which we which uh, the lord gave me the word i not this time but july prayer meeting fasting and prayer if you heard it it was given in very short but it was very important spirit praying with organizingly could not use the holy spirit cannot use the man's language so it is unspeakable with that groaning the holy spirit is praying all the time through whom those who have become one spirit by faith of the son of god so that is the prayer life of the spiritual man dearly beloved then keeping yourselves in the love of god keeping yourselves in the love of god that is dearly beloved this is our environment god is our environment as we began he is embracing us and we are embracing him and this embrace is done started on the cross of christ on his in his hands dearly beloved crucified dearly beloved and we are crucified with him this crucified life the love of god remaining in the love of god is to remain in the crucified life of christ so that the resurrection life of christ the eternal life of christ continues to work in us live in us according to second corinthians 4:10 it is a continuous process it is a continuous process of dying in christ and resurrecting in christ and living christ in us living christ in us dearly beloved many times i have spoken about it. the lord has dearly beloved so this this third thing is remaining in the love of god this is the environment this is the environment and the very first verse also says the same thing dearly that in the very first verse jude also says the same thing preserved in jesus christ mercy peace and love be multiplied mercy peace and love be multiplied See, dearly beloved, this is the this is there, which which can be multiplied that which is there. When you are in the faith of God, in the faith of Christ, when you are already saved, when you are beloved of the Lord, then what we have? We have God. When we have we have where in God, we have peace, we have love, we have joy, we have multi, we have all these things, mercy, all these things. but it should be multiplied how can it be multiplied by being built up according to verse 20 then according to verse 20 onwards praying in the holy spirit by remaining in the word in the love of god dearly beloved and then what as as we have seen right from the beginning as the brother talked about first corinthians 1:7 the coming of the lord jesus christ the name of the lord jesus christ he is the coming one he is the coming one waiting for the coming of our lord jesus christ and here we see dearly beloved looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ unto eternal life even when our faith is pure and holy because it is him even when christ is our life even when the holy spirit is our life in the prayer even when our environment is god himself living in the love of god because we are in flesh we need the mercy we need the mercy god can condemn us to hell if he wishes but it does not because we are given all of christ and that's the mercy 
we are not given according the desert according to our doing but we are given the mercy and depending on that mercy daily daily look for be eager for and it says here anxiously awaiting anxiously with worry spiritual worry expect the lord jesus christ return any time now dearly beloved and then how should we behave among ourselves and he says have compassion have compassion making a difference sab have com have compassion making a difference of some some people may not agree with us some believers they are not of the same oh they they walk a little different but have compassion have compassion dearly beloved and just tolerate them be with them as long as they are not immoral as long as they do not cross the line but when it says when somebody is crossing the line verse 23 others say with fear say with fear with what when somebody is there and uh, uh, living some a life of little lackness and slack oh lord have compassion for them but when they cross the line fear fear and because what fear oh lord oh lord he is going away go with him go with him colossus 8 128 as brother said let us build each one each one to perfection dearly beloved whom we greet warning that present every man perfect in christ dearly beloved eternal life it, it, that is it that is it here so others say with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh what does it say here hate your flesh life hate your flesh life be very very cruel to yourself very very cruel to yourself be poor in the spirit poor in the spirit yes dearly beloved the first beatitude poor in the spirit and say and really be very very cruel to self and very gracious and compassionate loving and kind to others may the lord enable us to understand the four the three the four beloved words that are given here first is the beloved in the lord in god who has sanctified us then third verse beloved oh dearly beloved that we may agonizingly contend for the faith third is a second actually speaking is beloved remember the apostles and their prophecies and thirdly beloved beloved verse 20 build up get get yourself being built up in the most holy faith that is christ praying in the holy ghost oneness in the spirit with god keeping yourselves in the love of god and looking for the mercy of the lord may the lord bless us abundantly and may he enable us to meditate more on this individually amen